Uh, I'm doing all right. We're going to test some GPS stuff, because apparently GPS weapons are having really interesting issues. Yeah. Beast. Indeed. Or was it, was it, was it that thing, Scarlet, where it just went and nearly stalled itself? Yeah, that's what, that's what we're going to test. So um, we're loading up with every single other GPS weapon the Hornet has to see if right. they do the same thing. Okay. So, Scarlet. Yes. If you are at 15, let me do the math, 15,250 feet. Oh, I have this in my fucking um, knee board. Oh, where's my journal? Right here. All right. If you have the Hornet around 15,000, but it's 15,200 feet to 15,275,000 feet. Mm -hmm. um, you're flying at 300 and no 310 knots right how much is it 310 knots uh, oh there it was uh, uh, yeah okay uh, GB 38 JDAM 500 pound uh, 15,550 to 15,575 at 318 knots Flying direct course online gives a JDAM weapon, if the GPS doesn't work, direct trajectory free fall. With no wind, it should land within 15 meters of the target. Okay. Uh, that is if the GPS isn't working and the bomb is just dropping like an MK-82. Yeah. I'll seem to pitch up, pitch up though. Oh, right, the distance of that is about 2.3 nautical miles at release, and it has the arc of, uh, it'll, is when, yeah, at those parameters at about 2.3. Mm. I, yeah, is what, that's what I have written down. That could be up to slight debate, but roughly. So, if we drop the bomb out of that parameter in zone, out of parameter entirely, drop one at that extent and drop one that should be an assured hit with GPS on which is like you know diving at the target and we'll have somebody spectate the target on the ground which will probably be me and then somebody spectate the bomb which will be you or Santa whoever's not dropping the bomb and we'll record and test results yeah and I'll write this all down because I have my journal here and I can write on my desk so we'll just need yeah if that's okay with you guys to just spend some time dedicating for a little bit on yeah. some research here. Also, do I need a deadlink pod for the slam ER? Um, not to use on target of opportunity. Target of opportunity, you're just the target of opportunity turns anything into a JDAM. Right. The only thing with the slam ER is your TOO gives you, if you're flying away from it, a maximum range of about 120 nautical miles. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, because the missiles, the missiles are gonna burn about four of that in, I suppose you could say, delta V, to um to um make that turn. So it's gonna cut your range a little bit, but mm. once it gets on course, it's got about 120. If you're flying straight at the target, it's 160. Yeah, because it's got a turbojet on board, right? No, well, yeah, it's got an air breathing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a scramjet. It's not a ramjet. I think it's a scramjet. Ah, uh, that requires flights speeds of like above Mach 3 and I don't think oh, okay. the Slam Yard has no, that. It's not that. Then yeah, it must be a turbojet. I thought I thought scramjet was slower than a ramjet. No. Nah, no, scramjets are a bit more complex than a ramjet now nah, with a wider operating envelope. Gotcha. Yeah, that is just an air breathing. Yeah. So oh. I'm pretty sure a ramjet only works at like Mac 4, uh, whereas gotcha. a scramjet can function um, between, I think, like Mac 2.5 upwards of Mac 6. Gotcha. Um, if I remember correctly, the uh, Blackbird had um, an engine mode where they essentially, um, once they were supersonic, they could shut down the turbojet and run it just off the afterburner as a scramjet. Okay. So essentially uh, all of the air is going around through the bypass duct 
down into the afterburner, and then they just dump fuel into that. Gotcha. Okay. Which is kind of nuts. Yeah, it's that's insane. That sounds that's awesome. I'm putting on these, uh, is it BRU-55? Uh, uh, GBU-6? No, oh, the no, BRU-55 is a uh, multi-ejector rack. I yeah, to I just worked so, a 10 hour shift, okay? Cut fuck yeah. off. <laughs> so, so, GBU 38, 500 pound GPS guided bomb, is that what I need? Yeah, yep, that's what you had earlier. Yeah. Four, uh, four of those. Or about two of those, because it's a two rack. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, then, and then four of those, so eight, eight, eight of those, no, is that right? No, 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 just two uh, racks, so four bombs. Alright. What else should I bring for the fun of it? Uh, I would put those on the outside, actually, and then on the inside, I would bring under air-to-air -air missiles either, uh, no, I would bring, uh, yeah, either slams or sows. Right, I don't, either yeah, we haven't gone through those yet. <laughs> yeah, so, did you, did you, teach him, did you teach him, um, target of opportunity with the T-Pod and the JDAM? Yeah. Okay, he knows how to use them. Yeah, but we didn't cover those specific weapons as all. Well. Gotcha. So the only thing you need to know about those, Santa, the only yeah. difference between those and what you did earlier, is um, a J Sow is a J Dam with 60 nautical miles range. Mm. Um, depending on your height and speed. Basically, and it's a J Dam with wings. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Exactly, it is a J Dam with wings. And um, they're under AG missiles, not bombs. Yeah, because they're a standoff weapon. All right, so AG missile. Which one was it, sorry? The top the two are... in the uh, in the list are Eight. the single racks, and then the second half of the list is uh, the double racks of them. Okay, that so is... if I take the BRU forty, uh, BRU fifty five. Yep, and there are two one models of JSAL. There's the A model and the C model. One yep, has ATM one fifty four A yep. or C. So the A has a cluster warhead, basically little yeah. bomblets, and the C has a bunker buster. Okay, so it sounds like A would be good because we're just going for surface yeah. thing, is that right? I well, it's whatever. I haven't actually used A's, so... They're kind of cool. We'll grab an Request A. refueling. Request Copy. rearming. They're not wind, um, uh, wind directed, other than the the, the wind, pod itself. Wind corrected, yeah. Corrected, yeah. It would be awesome if they were sensor fused. Could you imagine a CB 105 with wings? No, that's, that's, in, in real life, that's what the Sao A is. Is the same one as the 109, I think, which is the one where it drops the little pods on parachutes that uh, float down. That's and... that's the 105, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what the nice. sow actually is. Um, just the the military did not like BB putting that particular submunition in ah, because yeah. like the world doesn't really like those submunitions. So Why not? They, they're the best submunitions ever. They really are, but people think those are the ones that don't get um, rearming complete, and that's the one that blows up when you know 16 year olds drive by in their cars 10 years after the war. No, they, um, the, these are the ones that were specifically designed to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the media the, will be the media. Yep, yeah, the media will be the media. That's a good. I'm gonna use that from now on. That's a perfect way to put it. Um, and so DCS Wags was really only able to give us the, um, the, the, the raining warhead or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's essentially a uh, like a rock eye with wings. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> Got a... She's Sorry. cutting out really bad for me. Yeah, okay. me too. Alright, well, hang on. Any better? Uh, sort of. Sounds like you're speaking okay. through a, a, a drain pipe, but. Alright, that's yeah. crap. Let me let me fix that. Hang on. He says that's correct. What? No, he's <laughs> he says that's crap. <laughs> Oh, I thought he said that's correct. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? What do you mean you're holding a drain pipe up? What the hell? How are you doing this? It's like the tin can on a string. That still makes no sense to me. And I know the science behind it. Yeah, it's kind of nuts, that that one. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like it's like it's the science that shouldn't work but does. Yeah. 
It's like proving God well, is real. Uh, what? Well, uh, the tin can and the string is the exact same principle as like putting you into the ground to hear like a running horse approaching, or like um, if you put your ear to like a, a rail, like a a railway, you'll be able to hear the train like when it's like fifty miles away. You know what my best description of traveling through a medium is? What? Of like you know sound traveling through a medium. What? Hydrophones and sonar. That's precisely it. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm, I get the science behind it, and I understand much more science behind it. But like, you wouldn't think a fucking string would work. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the boggling part about it for me. But, but it's the, like the key is it's whatever. a taut string. It's a it's a taut string. Yeah, but you still wouldn't exactly think it works. Yeah. Uh, oh, I could talk to you through a string up to like 50 feet away. What? You're crazy. Uh, so which I one is uh, the hornet right in front of me? Uh, I'm not in uh, a hornet. That's, I'm that's in, me. I'm in a T90 to compare impacts on the ground to start recording. I can see the craters fucking everywhere but where the fucking targets are. Yeah, so I think Rhode wow. and whoever were doing stuff this morning. Wow. And then Santa and I came on and pounded the crap out of it again. It's like um, successfully. Oh, yeah. It's like when we got when we got our teapods on target, um, I had to actually mention to Santa that hey, most of those hotspots are craters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is my audio better? Much better. Yeah, much. Wow. Okay. Unfortunately, I pressed cancel. Uh, and I lost my loadout, so I'm just fixing it up. Yep. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> the, the, the one, the targets outside of the airfield fence are good. They've all, you know, got a crater on top of them. But I'm assuming that's when everybody came to the conclusion, oh shit, we need laser guidance, or we're not going to hit anything. <laughs> but all the targets at the airfield, there are more craters away from the only dead groups than there are on top of Yeah, uh, couldn't have been me. <laughs> Must have been somebody else. No, I'm just saying in general, <laughs> like over the course, this this server might not have been reset for two days for all we know. Probably hasn't. Yeah, I don't think it has. Okay, I so... I telling Grantis, like, yo, dude, like, you gotta, if you're gonna run a server like this, bro, like, the more craters there are, dude, the buggier it's gonna get. Two days worth of craters is going to be terrible. That's why Enigma saves progress and resets every, like, four hours. Yeah, it's like um, the, the Reapers server reset every eight hours, I think. Yeah. I could Foya reset every so put... ten, but granted, Foya doesn't save progress. I, I, I was bringing up Enigma. Oh. Go, Santa. Uh, so I've got Blue Smoke, uh, Sidewinders on, on uh, 9 and 1. On 8, I'm looking at a BRU-55, 2 times GBU-38, uh, GPS guided bombs. On 7, I have a BRU-55 with 2 times 154A mm -hmm. JSAO CV. Uh, I've just chucked the Sparrow semi-active radar. I don't know what that is on number 6. <laughs> Field tank on 5, uh, AT flare on 4. Uh, yeah, they of course, you walk through the AT. That's the <laughs> one I know. <laughs> AGM 154A again on number three, and on number two, I have a BRU 55 with the EBU 38 ADAM GPS guided. Nice, it's that'll work. Um, just one note. Um, yep. Uh, because, so the JSAO is a thousand pound weapon, whereas the JDAMs are 500, so the JSAO is fat. So uh, you'll okay. probably just be ready for uh, a lot of occlusion. On your teapot with that. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's workable, yeah. but uh, you might want to uh, do head on runs rather okay. than okay. orbits. Yep, if got your JSOs are also on your oh. outboards, even on your inboards, really, you're going to get a lot of roll when you release, too. Mm. Oh, bloody okay. heavy. Sweet, let's get ready for that. Hey, we All got right. an Enterprise. Hi. Good day. Hola. An Enterprise? What does that mean? That's guy's name is his name is nx01 enterprise oh is this one of those hind dudes yes it is oh bird sorry dude i just worked a 10 hour shift bro i'm fucking beat <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, it's morning yeah. 
Yeah, it's fucking 147 now. I just cut off. <laughs> I'm beat. We got this. So we're testing um, at the moment the potential bug with JDAM. Or with GPS in general, maybe. I don't really know. What kind of bug? Uh, uh, so earlier this it. morning, um, I was running a training mission with Santa here, and our JDAMs were basically trying to pull a Cobra. So they come off the rail and just keep pulling up and bled all their energy and fell like 500 yards short. Really? Mm -hmm. That's funky. It, is it possible that you set the angle to 90? We no, were doing TOL. No, see, ah. yeah, the, thing about, the so, thing about setting angle is that setting impact angle. So the bomb isn't going to ever try to gain altitude. It's going to fly level until it gets to a point where it can dive straight down on the target. Correct. I mean, I've had, for the win. I've, I've had my bombs try to gain altitude before, but they still hit. The only time a JDAM <laughs> should yeah, ever I attempt to go up is if you release it in an upward pattern from a significant distance, in which case the JDAM goes into a toss bomb mode and will try to sustain as much distance as it can. Yeah. Well, that's the only time, if your nose is over five degrees, this is the only time a JDAM should ever try to gain altitude, and it'll never climb any more than the angle it was released at. Yeah, and um, I did manage to get one to hit this morning, but I had to drive, like, over ten seconds into the zone. And that's weird, because in zone... Is so yeah, in zone is the yeah. max theoretical range. So I usually wait one to two no, meters in, before releasing, and that's usually that's, enough. That's backwards. It's in range is max theoretical range. In zone is um, uh, if you're in zone and you're you know it says in zone that bomb is going to hit, mm. unless you know you're too close, in which case you won't see in zone anymore. Yeah. The only thing that shows up on your HSI is your end zone. It does not show you maximum range. Well, and it will, because your HSI will show you both, but your yeah. end zone is the little box inside the ring. That's the minimum range, so that's the limit of um, whether or not the bomb can turn quick enough to get on target before it overflies. So that's the minimum portion of that box. The ring itself is the maximum range, and then you have inside this little box. If you zoom in, you'll get this little box. You can see it with the Jace house. But you zoom in, and that box is the, yeah, it's basically, yeah, in a sense. But if you're within that zone, anywhere within that box that's inside in range, that weapon will hit, no matter, mm. unless you're flying, you know, any more than, like, 80 degrees away. And yeah. that box will change depending on your aspect and what you're doing and your speed and your altitude and stuff. It will change. But if you're in yeah. that box, that weapon will hit. Yeah, we were uh, 10,000 feet, upwards of 420 knots. And, uh, yeah, driving directly at the target, and they were falling it's, short. It's crazy. I'm so eager to see this. <laughs> hey, at least tanks have their fucking sounds back, fuck's sake. They didn't have sound? Some of them didn't. Hmm. Weird. And they did at times, but so far everything has given me sound consistently so far, knock on wood. Nice. Oh, set the dog off. <laughs> okay, let's call it. I've rushed this a little bit, um, so I just want to make sure I've got everything. So my flare is on. I'm too quick that not timed out, so I'm just waiting for that thing to come alive, right? Uh, but, um, you can take off with that yeah. not timed out. It'll just yeah. do its yeah. thing. And then uh, codes on the bombs. I haven't said anything there yet. But we uh, you do don't, have you don't need codes. to. They're GPS, not cool. laser. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, the only reason I'm in combined arms is because it's a quick view for me to look at to see where the bomb is impacting in relation to a specific point. The target is not actually going to be the vehicle I'm in. The target is going to be the center of the X runway. This just gives me a camera close enough to see where the bomb actually fell. Aim at the tank, but the tank is not your target. Copy that. Your target, your target is just the center of the X. We're going to use this as a bullseye. I just want to see... If you're, if I just want to see if the scope is on the center of the bullseye, how, how bitch. much we have to tight it in. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just, we're doing science at the moment. The hardest part of flying the MiG-21 is knowing what all the knobs and switches do. The hardest part of flying the MiG-21 is seeing all the knobs and switches. It's being pretty low, is it Scarlet? <laughs> yep. Yep, okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were right behind me. Oh, no, that's right. Oh. Yeah, she's a, she's a heavy lady. Okay, is it okay if I go flying past you? Yeah, it's all good. Uh, I'm coming past on your left. Same altitude. Visual. Yeah. Right. Are you holding this for a while? Um, we don't have to do formation. Uh, but, okay. Uh, cool. All right. Yeah, we don't gotta be perfect. It doesn't matter which direction you're attacking from. Just let me know so I yeah. know which you know trajectory the bomb is falling from, and we'll, that way I can test consistencies. But so, uh, Santa, why don't you do uh, JDAM first, and uh, we'll see if it still does the same thing. Okay. Uh, if you need a or if you need a coordinate to set to like find the target, let me know. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll find the target. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, we also Whatever haven't gone over entering coordinates yet. Oh, yep. Okay. That's usually actually what I I kind of have a curriculum for when yeah. I teach the Hornet. I go um, like symbology switches, how to work the fucking thing, yeah. and then the first thing I go over after that is how to figure out where you are and how to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Because once he learns waypoints, he's basically learned everything. He doesn't even need the teapot at that point to hit a target. You know yeah. what I mean? He just enter in a waypoint. And so long as he knows how to do that and where to find them, then he can, he, that's, that's generally the basis of the Hornet. Because the Hornet works off waypoints, unlike the, the F-16, which works off of, um, I forget how the F-16 works off of. Steer points. Steer points, yeah. But the Hornet works off waypoints, because a target point and a steer point in the F-16 are two different things. Yeah. A waypoint in the F-18 is whatever the fuck you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, if you're around the Mars Santa, we can go over that. That would be awesome. Yep. Sweet. Up. I'll, I'll be free uh, Sunday through Tuesday. Nice. Uh, tomorrow's Saturday for you, yeah? Yep, I got one more day. Yeah, and that's the only day I have. Lovely. I'll be going back to overnights, but I'll still be working that night. We'll figure it out, though. I'm making hella good money. And I have five days of PTO, so I can call in sick, but not use my PTO if I'm, like, actually sick. But I can call in and use a PTO day for whatever the fuck I want. Sweet. Yeah, and I get paid to sit on my... I'll be, I, I'm saving all five of my PTO days to get paid to sit on my ass and play DCS with you. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking awesome. You'd think I'd know how to find this fucking place by now. Ah, there it is. Right? Like, we float over Georgia so much. But that's the thing, right? Is when we fly over Georgia. <laughs> I'm kind of an exception to this, because I actually, like, go over and I have a friend who's getting married to a uh, a lovely lady who lives in Tbilisi and so he's been traveling to Georgia quite a bit mm -hmm. and um, he, while he's been there he's been getting me pictures and he's been asking her questions I've written down about the region and things like that mm -hmm. and so I've actually been getting quite a lot of intel about like or not intel, but like quite a lot of information about like Georgia as a country. And DCS, or like Eagle Dynamics, has done actually really well mm. with modeling, not necessarily where the buildings are placed, but like the general layout of town. Like if you were to Google Tbilisi and look at the, not the satellite map and not the like, um, the terrain map, but like the, well, the other little map overlay they have, it mm. looks almost identical to DCS in terms of like the structures of the towns and the layouts of the rivers. The only noticeable differences that I've found is there's not a Formula One track in Sochi. 
<laughs> Which would make sense because that would, if I was Wags, that would piss me off to see a bunch of CA players fucking F1ing around the F1 track in Humvees. <laughs> oh, I'd be so, I'd be like, dude, this is DCS, not fucking iRacing. God damn it. You can't do anything about it, you know? What are you gonna do? You cannot drive here. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't. I'd be so pissed, dude. So I get it. I understand that. You know, like, that makes sense. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is um, south of Pokey Lake, north of this runway, there's another little lake that's kind of broken into two. Mm -hmm. So that is actually a, um, a, a water treatment plant. Yeah. So that's actually like 19 perfectly, like 15 to 19 perfectly little square lakes. However, they are actually broken into groups of two in that exact pattern and exact direction on the map. <laughs> so uh, I've got my uh, target point six meters to your south and west. Put it straight on me, if you can. Okay. We need to be as consistent as possible. And Scarlett, can you just help me out here? So I've, I've got my helmet, which, uh, that HMD, mm -hmm. uh, my right, uh, sorry, I've selected my HUD as my, so up, uh, cast switch up. Yep. I've got, I've got the little dot inside the cross if I look at the runway, mm -hmm. but when I, when I press my nipple button, it doesn't do anything. What am I forgetting? Uh, Edigram Master Mode. I love the, the last nipple, nipple button, by the way. Like a charm. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, so turn on your data link. Data link. Oh, okay, hang on. And your tag as well. I'm going to be completely honest right now, Scarlet. Yes? I am so jealous listening to you teach somebody else to hoard it. <laughs> Taking your job. Yeah, pretty much. The funniest thing about it is initially you taught me the Hornet too, so I have no room to be jealous. Yeah. But like, a really je you have the Apache. God damn it. Let me have my fucking Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Santa, do you see that little tank right in the middle of the runway? Hang I suppose on, I have back. the Big 15. I have the Big 15 bastard. <laughs> you I are. Suppose. Oh, let, let me have that one. Let me, let me have my faggot. You can have your faggot. Oh. <laughs> I love it, dude. YouTube oh. has censored this video in some nation. <laughs> uh, I'm not recording this, just a joke, but... I am. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, YouTube. Oh, I'm kidding. Now it's really gonna be fucking banned in most country. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Right. Okay, I, see a, I, I do see a black thing in the middle of the cross. Yep. Yeah, I so am that's right your there. target. Oh, oh, oh. So All there right. we go. I am right here. Ooh, flares. No, no, let's make the rave. Oops, yeah. the cats. Oh, wrong color. So yeah, cats you're going to aim cats. your pod directly on that tank's roof. So that's what we're shooting uh, at. So that's our yardstick. So Raz knows exactly how much we miss by. Okay. I don't know if you can see that little moving coax, but put it right at the mount of that coax. Hang on, hang on. Oh, Move it again. Uh, Holy I'm shit, I can see it moving! <laughs> uh, I'm having a nightmare, hang on a second. That was mainly directed to Scarlet because like now you can see that good a detail on the teapot and mm. we never are looking at the coax because usually by the time they move the coax we're out of there because we know they're going to shoot at us soon. Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's, not, so it's a detail you never really get to see. Mm. All right, so we're gonna do um, the same altitudes and the same speeds per pass. So B outs and auto throttles. Yep. And when I say speed, we're not gonna do indicated. We're gonna do mock. Yep. But we're gonna do the change of the mock. So it's close to the border. Like if you're doing 0.62 or whatever, you want to do right on the border of 0.62 and 0.63, or the border of 0.61 and 0.62. Yep. You know what I mean? Try not to stay in the middle, because Mach will give you like three or four knots of play. I hear you guys flying over, and it's fucking epic. How you doing, Santa? Uh, I screwed up. I lost my point, so I'm just coming around again. Copy. Oh, you should have taught it. You should, we should teach him how to save it as a mark point. 
Yeah, we'll cover yeah. that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, don't let me hold you up. If you guys want to do something, I'm, I'm having a bit of a nightmare. For some reason, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. I'll yeah, be back right. to normal soon. Alright. Uh, but I'll sort this out, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll throw you a Jace out. Okay. Just remember the parameters of your first target. We'll go whatever you set, Scarlet. You're setting the experiment with um, speed, altitude, and direction. Yeah. So I've got Just put, 0.68 yeah. at uh, 11,000 feet. 0.68, 11,000 feet, heading. Uh, it'll be about 150. 150, you say? Running, yes. Dobby, okay, so that's our HAS. Final attack vectors, 150. Angels, oh shit, I already forgot. It's 11. 11. I'm trying to write this down, but I can't find my fucking pencil. I just fucking had it too. God damn it, Becker, did you steal my pencils? on your bloody coax. Is it really? Oh. In range, weapon away. Okay. And it's diving and turning and behaving exactly as it should. Well, I mean, if the sow hits, so oh, it's going long. Oh, it's going very long. It's gonna die. Oh, oh my god. There we go, now it's just Whoa, okay. Now it's going long. Nope, it's terminal. Yeah, it's terminal. That's what I mean. It's going long. Eh, it, it's it, an it's alpha. Terminal. It's gonna pop above you. Oh, right. Well, I'm gonna probably lose. Yeah. Shit, I'm really scared now, actually. Woo! Oh, yeah, there it popped. Oh, I'm so dead, I drove right into it. <laughs> oh, look, it does have the little parachutes. Let's go in back. Let's go in back. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow, look at that. That was perfectly on the runway. Holy that was shit. epic. <laughs> that was awesome from down here. I don't think you've realized how cool that looked looking past a tank barrel. <laughs> I was F6 to it. Dude, I was fucking F1 to it. <laughs> hey, and it left no craters on the runway. Really? None whatsoever? Yeah. None whatsoever on my screen, at least. I, I suppose they're hand grenades, so... Yeah, pretty much. Cool, well, alright, so I'm gonna go hide behind the worst cover available to me, which is these fuel tanks. For some reason, I've never got on any bomb to set a crater that lasts longer than about 10 minutes. Really? Because these... Craters last forever, I thought. Until the server resets. I had no oh, idea. Oh, I'm spawn. aware. I've never seen one despawn yet. This server's been up for two days, and some of these craters are still here. <laughs> <laughs> At least the ones I remember being here, here. <laughs> I mean, on the 4 a server, I remember I put a paveway in front of a MiG 25's hangar, and the crater despawned after some. Hourish. <laughs> That's interesting. Fourier could also have like triggers to reset that like particular thing, but I've never heard of a trigger as such, so I highly as, doubt. So as much as I've seen the Fourier devs bitch about performance, they probably have some script to clean up things like that. Right, especially because like it's a training server too. So like, how many fucking yeah. Idiots missed their yeah, run runways are gonna be useless. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that that kind of makes a lot. Yeah, like you know, imagine somebody spawn in that hangar and there's a fucking crater right there. I'd be so pissed. Hmm. And that's the only available Hornet at that spot. The other one you gotta make a fucking 300 mile trek. I'd be so pissed. So I, I get that. I I do. I, that makes a lot of sense. And that's probably something that V2 has like a lot in terms of like its changes from the old servers. Yeah. Because the old servers weren't like that. The old servers, somebody hopped in the ground unit and the game broke. Yeah. Uh, I remember Scud Bs were invisible, dude. It was so cool to watch a fucking single Scud just plow through two players right above you and travel 600 miles and there's fucking nothing on your screen. 
You're just F6 to a fucking invisible brick. <laughs> Fuck it, it was so fun, dude. Then they got rid of scuds, and I'm pissed about it now. Uh, this, this is, is good. definitely a training server. I'm watching someone repeatedly engage a tree with Hellfars. Yeah, there you go, there's your point on target. God bless the 4 YA. That's funny. Is there a weapon away? Nope. Nope. I just heard somebody fly overhead. Okay, cool. So the JSAL worked. Uh, do you have C's on, Scarlet? Uh, negative. Ah, shit. All right, throw a slam. Wow, uh, like you'll oh, you'll get a, a slam ER because that's on the opposite station. I don't give a shit. Just throw a slam. Because slam, otherwise, slammer. if I throw the slam. I'll have nothing on one wing and fuel in a slam ER on the other. Throw me a slam slash er. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Yeah, a slam ER, you can fire from uh, 180 degrees so long as you have decent enough range because if you're too close and the missile has to make that turn, it's going to break because it has to take a second to reset its gyros. Mm -hmm. uh, slam, uh, like a normal slam, the old slam. You, the maximum limit is 90 degrees left or right. Sometimes that does break it. They just do a fucking circle forever. <laughs> but, yeah, sometimes they work. Most if, if you're far enough away within grid parameter, they work. But if you're too close or it's a odd parameter, they fucking are like, yeah, what? I'm just going to wait here till you tell us what to do. <laughs> and they just fucking do circles until they run out of fuel and crash into an orphan. That's something Actually, flashing the, red, that's probably a bad sign. There you go. But yeah, the old slams, the, 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 the harpoon type slams, would actually self-destruct when they ran out of fuel. The slam ERs don't give a shit. They just fall in the dirt. <laughs> With the fuse still on. It, it's funny. The slam ER, you can also set a pre-programmed point, like, a hundred miles away. And then switch it to TOO and like designate a point right underneath you and fire a slam ER. And if the slam ER is like, well, I can't fucking hit that, what the hell, dude? Fuck it. And it'll reach, it'll like adjust its course to go and hit that preset point. It's kind of cool. Slam ERs are fucking awesome, and DCS doesn't do them a goddamn justice. Like, you know the Slam ERs we have in DCS only work at, like, a quarter of their actual capacity? Yeah. Yeah. Because they've only got, the, the actual Slam ER has about a 250 mile range, uh, as three types of fucking guidance and is yeah they're just fucking awesome <laughs> I mean I found them pretty effective in terms of I managed to hit a mix 21 off an airfield with one dude yeah they're fucking crazy dude the slam ER technically has the ability of flying it was designed for the mud hen Right, the Slam ER was specifically designed as a Navy Slam for the Strike Eagle. And so, it's designed to be dropped by a, um, <laughs> a backseater, fly a specific waypoint. The F-15 can break its data link at that point. It can fuck off and it can go take gas, it can go fly off and the pilots can bust a nut, whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, and then fly back to the initial launch point and reconnect to that missile. After the missile has already flown 100 mi 100 and well, the missile can actually travel about 240 to 250 nautical miles max, but at about 200 or so, about 190, 200, they'll reconnect to the missile. And at that point, the missile has already navigated through a 15 waypoint course through a mountain valley, terrain navigating the whole fucking time, flying precision, you know, altitude. Um, and when they reconnect to it on the other side of this mountain through the AWACS, because it runs off Link 16 technically, not 
the fucking Link 13 that we have in DCS. Um, they can connect to it. The back seat can then either choose to TV fly it in on a perfectly clear image. Um, he can then decide to switch it to a laser designation. So an infantryman can then take over the weapon. Or he can switch it to an anti-radiation, and that missile can then start acting, in a sense, like a harm. It's not a very good harm, because it's slow as shit, but it can start seeking a pre-designated or self-designated anti-radiation source. Open away. Oh, you got, got a JDAM coming in on you as well. Got a beat. So that's good to be. I keep and checking about JDAM landed. Don't know what I was aiming for. Huh? Aiming for the center. Yeah, we're oh. aiming for the dead center. Okay, I hit exactly what I wanted to hit, but uh, how, how, do I lock, how, lock, yeah, how, lock, how do I lock on to uh, the center runway? Normally I press the right castle and it puts a little square around the target I'm looking at. But if I'm aiming at the center runway, what's it going to lock on to? So you can just so do that in scene. Oh, okay, if you release. Oh, okay, so you don't have to you have the little square thing, the little brackets on the inside. No, so uh, oh, the track right is right. the most. ground is really cold. Holy yep. Christ, that was precision. Holy shit, that scared the fuck out of me. Oh my god. Well, that wow, went exactly was where it was supposed to. Yes, 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 it did. You missed your center mark by, oh fuck, maybe two, three feet. And the only reason that is probably a thing is because you were aiming for my, um, my, um, fucking turret mount. Um, so you were technically designated through me. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's yeah. a target. That, that's a jack. I would be very dead. That scared the fucking piss out of me. I <laughs> forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I, I literally heard nothing, and I'm talking, you know, just minding my own thing, and then all of a sudden I just hear... What the fuck? That scared the fuck out of me, dude. Thing was coming in just under mock, bro. <laughs> So anyway. that crater yeah. is about 12 meters from my aim point. Yeah, I hit that crater. That's a great aim point. Okay. I was going to smoke it, but like, like, yeah. Here, I can still do that. Bank. Thank you. Why yep. don't I see the crater? Oh, I see the crater. Uh, I see smoke. smoke. Yep. yep. But that's just me puffing away on the damp pen. <laughs> Let me know when you drop so I can get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Go hide behind this tank. I would totally sunset. invite you to the server that we're on and pra like testing this on Enterprise, but these guys have already kind of expressed our... Um, that we've done that quite a bit, just bringing random people onto the server, and they prefer if they get an opportunity to like kind of meet you in Discord first. So yeah. it's like, it's like what? what yeah. It's gonna release them. Let's do it whenever it says in zone, really. Yeah. I mean, if you hit yeah. the first target, like if you yeah. hit exactly what you were aiming for, then just redo that. Just don't designate the point, like a point track. Yeah. Uh, rocket the way for bombs. Rocket the way. So rocket the way. Hey boy. And yeah, it's flying completely level. It's not massive picture. Because it knows it does. It does. It's, it's not flying. It's not turning. 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 I was left in it. 
Yeah, that ain't tuning, eh? That yeah. is a stall. That bomb is no aspect. Yeah, that that's a dud. That's a bad bomb. Bad bomb. Bug run. Huh. I see. How far away did he release that initially? About six, four six miles. miles out. Six. six? Oh, is that oh too far? My God, no. That should be a hit. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you oh. designate the point? Was it in okay. TOO mode? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, just Oh yeah, because that's about where the waypoint. Oh yeah. Mode TOO. Cool. And also don't fuse mean. as well. Yeah, uh, we both at the same time. <laughs> that's funny, Scarlet. <laughs> I'm not sure what the fuse was on. Uh, it was off. Off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. it was abused. <laughs> it, that, that was just 500 pounds of concrete Cadet just <laughs> poke into yeah. this field. <laughs> this I mean, it would still gonna... probably kill a tank, or at least an APC. Uh, in real life, would, um, depending on where you hit the tank, if you hit the, like, if you hit like a hatch, no, it wouldn't go through, but if you hit like some of the thin armor, like around the driver's hatch, that driver's gonna be sitting there and have just a fucking warhead punch through the front of his tank and sit there unexploded, and he's just gonna look at it like, Oh uh, my god, do you remember? Ivan, what the, do not turn the turret right. Do you Holy remember <laughs> the movie Get Smart? Yes. When they go through the golf course and they get a swordfish through the windshield. It's exactly like that, but it's a bomb right next to you, sticking halfway in the fuel tank, and you're just like, uh... Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Are you thinking, holy shit, holy shit, the Jada almost went through my face? If so, yes. <laughs> exactly, dude. Just, <laughs> precisely. That all depends, but if you hit the driver's hatch, dude, all you're gonna hear is a gong, and the driver's gonna try to pop the hatch, and I'm like, what the fuck? What the yeah, fuck? <laughs> Trying again? So this mode time, TOO, when you, fuse. And then when you get the point, hit your TDC depress, your designate button. You don't have to do that in the AT clip. That's it's just smart to do it anyways. It's just really smart to do it anyways. So press also, it. Santa's had yeah. a little bit of issue where he'll uh, press TDC depress and uh, it'll skew his aim. So what? Um, um, lightning for life. Litning fam, this post sponsored by Litning fam. <laughs> you fucking marines. No, the, oh, it's the, the other way around. The Lightning is a marine pod when they're operating yeah, yeah, shore it's... bases. The AT Fleer is the Navy. Yeah, no, the AT That's Fleer fucking is... tracking. Oh. That looks good. There it goes. That is gonna kinetic straight into you, dude. No, it's not. He's going to drop it right Ooh. in that goddamn crater. Okay, that's a good hit. Oh, fuck. Okay, uh, splash damage script. Hello. Ow. <laughs> okay. Ivan, this is not a good spot. Get a GTF... G... G-U-T-F-O. Fuck, I'm too tired for this bullshit. Alright, fuck this shit, I'm out. I'm fucking... That, that hurt. Not really, it was just a shrapnel ping on one of the tracks, but... <laughs> I still pop smoke because my fucking gunner's a pussy. Oh um, man, wouldn't it be funny if just one bit of shrapnel hit your tank and just happened to knock a track pin out? Yeah, fucking Tom Hanks and fucking Saving Private Ryan, that shit. <laughs> the fucking bomb shrapnel. Not Even good. though that's not how the tank dies, the fucking airstrike that comes in is what kills that tank, but like, you know. I've soon never me, seen the media will Saving be Private here. Ryan. I know, Dude, it's a me. great, yeah, it's a, it's a toxically great movie. Mm. Like, I really don't know how else to explain it. Like, it's a good movie, but there's a lot of cringe moments in it if you're, like, really into that kind of shit, like we are, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'll, it's like, it's like, it's okay, like, wait. it's like Hacksaw Ridge with cringe. But we all know Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. I, mean, I think Hacksaw Ridge. Ah, nice. Hacksaw Ridge. Missiles and fuck this shit out of my mouth. Is it going? Excuse you, the target is over there. Yeah, this is why I don't use original uh, generation slams. They're fucking weird. And they literally look like a fucking spine penis, dude. <laughs> the wings are moved back and it looks literally like a camera dildo. 
I agree with. Can you give me a bronze this treatment. thing? To the missile? Yeah. Yeah, where the fuck are you? Oh, it's uh, fucking 270 straight. Uh, two, yeah, 276. Yes. I called Alcatraine. that shit. Uh, 270 for 13, Angels 5, Colt. Copy. Angels 5. New vectors. Two six five for twelve for uh, five or angels five. Uh, I'm just gonna put you on a fucking intercept course. Fuck this. Scarlet turn course two four eight for sixteen expedite. Two four eight for sixteen expedite. Oh, it turned. Whoa. Oh, oh my, my god. Well, this isn't really very easy. Scarlet new course turn two four zero for four thirteen. Expedite. 240? 13? 240, yeah. Fucking missile turn the second I gave you a bra. <laughs> Go in auto -wag. What's its airspeed? Uh, 525 knots. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think it's calling it. Ah, no, uh, 481. You're going 560. Yeah, this thing is hauling ass, bro. Range? Uh, from you at this time, 10 nautical miles. And closing. Slowly. Dude, this missile literally. Is this directly off of my nose? Just about, yeah. You have no other flying things in that direction. I've got nothing on. Ooh. Distance, 10 miles, 238. For you, that would be 232. Did you drop a bomb, Santa? Because I'm not watching. I have not dropped. No. Okay. I'm turning in, though. There okay. you go. Alright, I'm in true. Did you see it? Uh, no, but I'm in uh, true bearings, so you don't have to convert them now. Sweet. Uh, two, three, one for nine. Two, three, one for nine. Angels five? Angels five. Speed two, eight, or four, eight, two. Heading two two four. The missile is. Oh yeah, you're straight up. You're 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 my cousin Vinny dead on balls on that shit. Scarlet, Bolo one three, vampire, 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 protect the fleet. Look at your old fucking missile. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Can't get it on radar. <laughs> Um, the, the, the Hornet's gun radar is actually also designed within five miles to detect really tiny shit like that, so that might be a thing. I think this missile is gonna outfly you and fall into the sea. Like, you are fucking far away at the moment. Well, I guess you're only like 30 miles. I thought you said I was 10! From the missile? Yeah. And you're still, now you're only 7. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, Again, directly up my nose? Straight the fuck at it. Yeah, you, my missile's gone away. Again. You dropped a bomb or what? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's yeah. gonna land up somewhere in China, I think. So I Sorry. think I might kind of know what's going on. Okay. 
Oh, so hello. Wouldn't you, what, did you find it? Got it. There you go. So when the Hornet first came out, or when JDAM first was released to the F-18 in DCS, um, there was an issue with the T-Pods. But when the fucking T-Pod first came out, because we had JDAM well before the T-Pod. Anyways, uh, when the T-Pod first came out, JDAM had this funky issue where you had to designate every single bomb. Mm. You couldn't just designate the point and save the point. You oh. had to designate each individual um, weapon because that's how it works in the A-10. And the A-10, they, they pretty much copied the A-10's JDAM onto the F-18's JDAM for the F-18's JDAM. So that might be the issue is ha that we're having is for some funky ass reason went back to that. Because notice, even with the AT Flare Scarlet, his first bomb missed when he didn't designate. He designated, that bomb hit. He didn't designate, that bomb didn't hit. Mm -hmm. Even with the, the point track, you know, that's still a designation. Yeah. And it hit what he wanted it to hit, which was those fuel tanks. Box one. So, try another pass, oh. Santa. Designated. If you have, if you don't have, I don't even know if you have another J down. I don't think you do. Oh no, I've got, what's JSA? The uh, J size. No good? No, it's, it's pretty much a J down. Slash. Oh, okay. Thunder. Missile interception. Oh, you said it's Come Slash. <laughs> Scarlet, good intercept. Woo. RTB to, well, like in your case, it's uh, base, so yeah, RTB. I RTB killed a base. missile oh. with a missile. Wow. Yay! That's my 14 shit. Technology, yeah, <laughs> technology. Well, the Hornet's also supposed to fill that role, dude. Yeah. Right. But I think I might be too late on that. Yeah, I didn't pick that thing up until like six miles. Yeah, you might have been too late on that. I mean, well, I was, I was basically looking for like a, what is it, like a 20 inch circle? Yeah, pretty much. In fact, it may have been because it jinked again, and it presented me oh, a bit of a, a side aspect. Maybe. I didn't see it jink, but I'm also watching Santa's JDAM now fly above him in altitude. There's yeah. Jace out. It's not normal, it's That's it's the one. The, uh, Check your uh, left it's 7 o'clock. We'll see a flying bomb. I'm getting away from it. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Right, the intercept I've never heard of fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Except oh, the J-Sows are low observable. <laughs> I mean, an SA-15 can still fucking intercept them. I've never heard of a pilot having to be afraid of his own bomb from yeah. above. <laughs> <laughs> never have I ever. That one's off the bucket list. <laughs> Dude, that he said, I'm guy. getting away from it. Dude, you dropped a bomb. What the <laughs> fuck? So, Santa, these things have the yep. wings, so they need a lot more room to maneuver than a normal JDAM. Okay. So, it, it, imagine a JDAM, but with a maximum range of 60 maximum, 20 minimum, regardless. You could it, it make it more like 10 minimum. Okay, so so go to 10, 10 miles off, turn around and try go, again? Go to like okay. 30 miles. Designate yeah. your point, designate okay. your point Designated. beforehand, yep. Yep. and then fly away about 30 miles, and then turn around and drop it. Okay. Scarlet, that bomb is in the drink. You're good. Yep. That's very interesting. Okay. I wonder if it also might have something to do with, like, server popularity. But I am at the moment leaning very much in towards um, the default JDAM script. Like, the A10 JDAM. Because at first, that was the original config, which is still in the Hornet files, was when you read um, the, the JDAM script. You, when the teapot first came out, it was um, literally search A10C config <laughs> JBU38 parenthesis weapon code M parenthesis or whatever the fuck it was. I don't remember the exact code, but it's in there. You can fucking look for it. <laughs> so I don't know if for some reason they this update like is making that code read before the Hornets new. T-Pod JDAM shit? I don't know. I really don't. But that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. 
Which is weird, because I don't think that, like, many people know about that. And would think that. So I feel like I'm wrong. <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm too fucking tired to think. <laughs> so, since we're just kind of waiting for Santa to get out to rage, there's really nothing we can do about that. Um... So you were asking me the other day, Scarlet, if Run 8 models detectors. Yeah? Dude, yes. Yes, it does. Like fault detectors? Yeah, like f full ass fucking UP79 or 30 detector activated. Ambient temperature, 7 8 degrees. Time, whatever. Cool. Beep. And then on the back of your train, the, the EOT device, or on an Amtrak, the EOT device is built in. But the, when the EOT device passes over the detector, you know, about 20 seconds after that, you get this fucking ear-piercing beep that just scares the living piss out of you every time. Um, and she comes back and she says your name, and she says the mile post. Mm -hmm. uh, detector, no defects. Repeat, no defects. <laughs> Ambient temperature. This, total axles, and the highest number that I've gotten that she's ever said for total axles is 712. Nice. And now total axles is locomotive and cars, but that's a lot of fucking wheels. That's a lot of weight. That, 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 that total cargo was 35 million U.S. pounds of bullshit. Fucking hell. That's a lot yeah. of dildos. Yeah, pretty much. It very well could have been. I don't know what the fuck they put in those fucking shipping containers. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, there could have been fucking people in them, for Christ's sake. Do you follow the YouTube channel Casual Navigation? Somewhat. They uh, just yesterday put out a video about um, the uh, container locks, which I had been wondering about. And it was really interesting. Um, and they worked pretty much how I expected them to work. Um, it's funny. Because that's on a container ship you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, the exact same lock is built into well cars for intermodal trains. Yeah. And, um, and then a that thing that, same uh, lock. <laughs> that I wondered about was, like, those locks are all well and good vertically, but what about when the ship rolls? And uh, a bunch of people came back and said that uh, basically there are straps that go across the top of the stacks to uh, handle that. So basically, each stack is lashed to the one next to it. Gotcha. It's like a crab pot. That's yeah. kind of cool. Okay. So, yeah, it's just that square shape is what's keeping it from tipping over. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but that's, that exact same lock is on the, the well cars for trains. And then it's also on um, these, like, trailers, like these, like, fifth wheel trailers. So you can literally end it. You know, anime. Can you bring an intermodal train in to, like, a container You're yard out. yeah container yard you yeah. bring up and then you watch the crane pick it up off the train car move it over to the semi truck trailer put it on and the thing drives hey off and another one pulls in hey boy 20.6 copy and i'm in with guns at 2.5 altitude altitude garlet advise when tally traffic uh, AGM 154A. Off left side. Oh, off straight ahead. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah! Oh, yeah, we're cranky down here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pissed off. We don't like us, too, but we don't like science. <laughs> hey, look at my missile. It's pitching. They're crazy. It's enter terminal. Yeah. Which is weird. You might have been too slow. It, uh, oh, it does that like wiggle when it changes um, changes navigation mode. Okay. And it From should uh, only initial do that wiggle. To cruise to terminal. And it should only do those wiggles, that last wiggle in the terminal about... I think that wiggle maybe was from initial launch point. into cruise. No, because the missile corrected and straightened out and then flew level for about three miles and then pitched up again. And now it's flying oh, yeah. straight. So it's I in terminal yeah, this is terminal, and it went into terminal at about 15 miles, which I have never seen before. Yeah, it's probably been launched too slow. 
but that's it should, what I was thinking. It should still make it. It's just it might get shot down by a dude with an AK on the way in. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Although I totally, I totally really forgot quiet, those guys were uh, still alive and shooting back. Yeah, I could change the ROV real quick. Eh. Kind of wanna run in again, just for shifts and giggles. We need to teach uh, Santa the gun. Or we need to, yeah, teach Santa the gun. Yeah, he knows let's the gun. Do some gun oh, let's yeah, do some fucking gun. gunfighting. Well, Excellent. he knows the air to ground gun. Oh, well, let's teach him the AA gun real quick and how simple that is. And then let's do some gunfighting. It's literally one button. Yeah, yeah. True. And it automatically throws you there, no matter what mode you're in. Yeah, that's true. Uh, could you uh, punt smoke onto one of these guys real quick? Right, uh, shoot at him. Okay. Wow, I'm gonna pop smoke. I just have to switch to my bikes. Um, Going towards the cross. It's looking good. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. I've decided you exist. No. Mo, oh, where pitching. the fuck is the target? Okay, maybe you're right, Scarlet. If it's pitching again, then yeah, it, that was navigating. Altitude. Mine's going mad now. Altitude. Now it's pitching up. Yep, it's as it should. Okay. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Did you fly under a JDAM? No. I uh, looked up, saw a smoke trail, and I forgot that Santa has the smoke canister on. That's, uh, that's me. <laughs> Not a freaking AMRAM. All good. It's slowing down. Yeah, it's it's trying to gain altitude to make sure that it can build up enough speed to hit the target. Yeah. Okay. It's another it's runway. Calculating, it's calculating what the parameters it has and what it can work with to make sure it hits what you wanted it to hit. It is really slow, it might fall a little short, but it will build up some speed. And as you can see, as it builds up speed, it pulls up a little bit. It's sure trying. It's tr you did you launched it slow, like right on the edge of your speed. So it's trying. It's it, it really is. It's 165 knots. Yeah. Oh, oh like, it's flying uh, over. Yeah, it, 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 it tried until the very end. Oh. What? Who did that? Somebody killed him. Oh, it was a nope. cluster. It was trying to fly over. Duh, dude, that oh. scared the thing exploded. It scared the piss out. I was like, well, that was a fucking dud. Looks down. Oh, that was an A. I'm dumb. <laughs> oh, uh. Fuck, dude, that's so funny, bro. That scared the piss. That was a direct hit. Good hits. Nice. Dude, that scared the shit out of me, dude. I'm so jumpy right now. God damn. Is that red smoke on a target? Yeah, it's a BTR. Because yeah, fuck that guy. I will fuck that guy momentarily. Jesus, okay. So violent about it, goddamn. I, I see him. You 420, what the smoke? <laughs> Did you see the smoke color? <laughs> you said. You ever see that? Uh, very, very dead. Right now. Oh. Okay. Not you, it is BTR. I know, but the BTR is still alive. You said right now, and it's it's right now, and he's not Altitude. dead. I'm gonna Altitude. Try again. Why can't I box J82? Don't have any? That, that's a very, very good reason. Fair enough. <laughs> His logic is like, oh, you know what? I think you might be right. I love it, dude. It's funny. I didn't hit shit with that, did I? Nope. Not a fucking thing. Did you see the smoke color, though? I mean, I saw all the colors. Yay! Uh, you ever see the, uh, did you ever watch Vine when it was a big thing? Uh, the only Viner I ever watched was Darius Benson. Damn, that sucks. Vine was amazing. I love Vine. There's this Vine out, there's one of them that I remember, where it's, um, it's, um, a guy coloring with crayons. And it's, it's like a little kid coloring with crayons. 
And his um, his little sister looks at him and he says, "Is that weed? I'm calling the cops." And she goes to the microwave and dials 911. And it comes back and says, "911, what is?" She? And it <laughs> zooms to this little boy and he's just like, "What Alpha the team. fuck?" <laughs> so he comes back like fucking um, like four years later, grown up. With, or not for like 14 years later makes another one where he locks her keys in her car <laughs> and she calls the cops to come and break into her car to get her keys out and he leans out of this third story balcony that they're at he's like hey Stacy is that a cop I'm calling the weed and he walks in and fucking grabs a banana and types in like it has like a I drop to it, he types in 420 and goes and then he goes ring ring 420 what you smoking <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it, dude. It is literally my life, bro. It's 420 with just smoke. <laughs> That's good. I'm crying just remembering it, dude. That is like the greatest Vine ever, dude. And it was like 14 years after Vine died. And the dude came back and made it. And it is just it is amazing. Best thing I've ever seen, dude. I love it so much. That's good. Hey, I found my pencil. Finally. Where the fuck were you when I needed you, man? You're like my ex. <laughs> cool. So, uh, I think we kind of have a rough idea of how the JDABs are working. But I would definitely suggest, um, which is something we've kind of been doing anyways on the Cold War server, is um, until we see JDAM. F8 anywhere in the F18 channel logs for anything should probably stick with LGBs. Uh, unless was, we're using there was one this change log and it was for um, fixing a crash to the desktop when dropping a JDA from a busted wing. Altitude. Weird. Very, very weird. Very, very, I thought very, very weird. But if you busted a wing, you couldn't drop a JDAM off that wing. Okay, so this time drop a bit faster. Is that the, the plan? Yeah. Yeah, do, if, uh, you're, right. if you're dropping JSAUs, it's good to be up high and it's good to be going fast. Yeah. Not below right. 350 knots, generally. Uh, okay. That's funny. We turned this into a lesson for Santa, but it was a science experiment first. <laughs> cool. I'm down for that. Huh? I mean, it's not even a lesson, it's like a, a refresher course, but with different weapons, just to prove the fact that it's the same shit. Yeah. Because, like, the Hornet is amazing. <laughs> F-18 is life. This Hornet sponsored by Litany Fan. <laughs> even though I would technically be the Marine, because Litany is the Marine pod, unless they're ashore. AT Fleer is the mm. Navy. Well, very technically, at least according to Red Eye, Red Kite, um, the uh, the litning that we have is modeled after those used by the Spanish Hornets. I think our Hornet is modeled off the Spanish Hornets. You know what? You might be right. Because, like, that would make sense, because if we had the, the U.S. Lot 20, the only U.S. Lot 20 has on the... Um, Oh god, it's, just, it's very minute differences, but they're very noticeable. Mm. It has a torpedo arming switch that is a physical switch. Like, it's a toggle switch. Mm. And it has a separate release switch. Weird. And it also has... Oh, what the fuck is it? It's, I think it's something to do with a performance increase. Oh, yeah. When did Hornets get slams? Uh, two years ago? Two years ago? Yeah. I mean, like, hold on, like, as in... The first gen Outside slams, of DCS, got, yeah. Oh, outside of DCS, uh, yeah. I think like 2000... No. I don't remember was when the slam was Was it A's or was it C's? The slam? No, there it was no A or C. It was just slam. No, I mean the, the like Hornet, a. was it... Oh, oh it was definitely yeah. the C. See, yeah, most the, definitely. The, the A was such a basic yeah. bitch. It's like, it, uh, it couldn't even use <laughs> AMRAMs. 
Yeah, no, the A did not. Uh, hold on. The A also had a really I, terrible. I have a book. I, I have a book on, I believe to be the A. Um, because it's. I mean, th th this book was basically made the year the Hornet entered service. Hmm. Um, it <laughs> includes a lot of things that I don't believe they should know about, but one of those things is mentioning the AMRAM. So it would have Maybe been go in both. testing, but deployed alpha model Hornets could not use the AMRAM. Uh, yeah, it shows it shows a couple test fires at the AMRAM. Yeah. Um, the AMRAM itself God, was still it? a very, very new missile at the time the Hornet came out. Yeah, like, well, the A came out. Yeah, the, like, they like didn't, the, I the A um, it had very basic digital systems, and it was a moving map, like a physical moving map, like you got in E6. Yeah, I can no, see I that it now. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have a center MFD. Nope. nope. No, I, I, can't see, I can't see a center MFD on the simulator pictured here. Nope. Um, actually, no, there's two simulators pictured here. One of them doesn't have a center MFD, the other one does. So, so it's not B? an MFD, it's literally a physical, like, film of a no, map that's, that's that moves around. an MFD. Yeah. Hey, put some noise, Raz. Yep, yeah, I'm watching. Um, Alpha Model Hornet is so basic. That motherfucker is high right now. And it's also to the right, but that might be because it's compensating for the wind drift. I'm still trying to figure out if there's any way you can actually switch the Hornet in game to velocity search. Ah, uh, no. Uh, uh, because uh, its radar well, sort of does that anyway. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, it overshot on my screen. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Or I don't know what it's doing. I really don't. That is interesting. Yep, this definitely confirms my theory. LGBs are the fall fact. Santa, you're a trendsetter. I am not touching anything GPS until they mention either a fix for the teapot or a fix for the GPS, because it's obviously not just JDAMs. Or I'm forgetting to do something here. Maybe. Did you designate yeah, the point <laughs> before you flew out? I did, yep. Then, yeah, I think you're, I think it's not, I don't think it's you. I Request think refueling. Yeah, the, this book is so me showing its age. The primary air to air weapon Copy. of the Hornet is the AIM 7F Sparrow, and possibly oh, in future, the AIM 7M. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, phantom weapons, woo! Yeah, and this shows the use of the 9L and 9J. Oh, mm. yeah, that definitely shows the Navy's love for not upgrading, where the fuck? Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> You, well, you can really tell, tell that it, 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 it's just a it's just a grown up F5, right? Yeah, it's literally an F5 with the weight to carry BVR weapons and a better radar. <laughs> yeah, and maybe more bombs it's and maybe easier to this drop. Book those mentions bombs. the F5 as well. Yeah, um, yeah, dude. The Hornet. The more it's funny because like it's well, never blatantly out of the said. F5. Yeah, it's never blatantly said that the Hornet, the the F5 was a big inspiration for the Hornet. It wasn't but, just like the, the more you the know, basis. yeah, basically, dude. Yeah, it's never blatantly said anywhere. But the more you look at the Hornet and the F5, you're just like, yeah. So the lineage the goes, the lineage goes, F5E target two, YF17 Cobra, YF17 A. Yeah. Where They're the literally hell? the fucking. It's amazing. I love yeah. it so much. And the but yeah, the YF-17's so, landing gear is so spindly. So you know what I'm thinking about? He said that there's two simulators. Yeah. So yeah. the the F-18A and the F-18B are the exact same aircraft, both manufactured at the exact same time. One Dude, just has fuck the this seat. light post though. Yeah, one just has a back seat. The back seat <laughs> yeah. in any Hornet has always had three MFDs. 
So I'm wondering if maybe that second sim he's looking at is a sim of the back seat. Probably no. is. No, okay. he, he's got he's got UFC in the center. It's saying it's on ACL, and he's definitely flying it. He's definitely in the front. Ooh, um, the back seat it's can... it's it's okay. a it's a carrier landing simulation. So I just noticed a boo boo. I'm coming. Well, that's uh. the thing, though, right? Is the 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 Legacy Hornet and the Rhino both are mirrored cockpits. Yep. Same thing as the Mirac. Oh, this so, one's gonna hit. This one's gonna the hit. Only, the only, the biggest thing you'd want to look at there is look display. Because the back seat in the Hornet doesn't have a HUD. So I just He's noticed a there's a seam in the model. Um, pretty what, much the J right. No, in the Hornet. Oh. Um, pretty much level with the front tip of the canopy. Um, at on. about the two o'clock position around the circumference. And again at the 10 o'clock, there's a seam in the model where I can look through and see the taxiway line. Ooh. That's a boo boo. Oh, That's better. That's just yeah, some that, was that wasn't your target, but that was close. Uh. Oh shit, out of fuel. Tailbone. Yeah, you're also stalling. Oh, your engine uh. died. That's why you're stalling. Ah. Oh, no, no, I was just stalling. All right, you're Winchester. Bring her home. Yep. I'm gonna hop in a Hornet and do some gunfights. Oh, the, the, this is where I mentioned the F5E. It was about the Sparrow. The one telling comment on the missile's size was provided by a paper study done a few years ago to assess the effect of equipping the F5 to carry it, when the general effect was described as like putting an anchor on the aircraft. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. So, I've told Scarlet about complete. this, but back when I worked at my old uh, head shop, my old smoke shop, um, I had a couple F5 pilots that would come in from um, Aspen, and they would fly their own planes in the Aspen and drive down to my smoke shop to buy cigars out of the humidor. And they would tell me that out at China Lake, they would have F5s come in on gun runs. One of them was guilty of this. And they would do gun strafes at targets from certain angles and certain speeds. And um, they would actually end up bouncing their complete. rounds off the ground back into the belly of the aircraft. Because they would play games of chicken who could pull out the lowest after your ground attack. After, like, your dive. Oh, God. And That's so they would bad. come back and the crew chiefs would come over and look at these aircraft and be like, Why the fuck are there bullet holes in the bottom of my goddamn jets? And nobody would own up. Obviously, you know who the fuck it was because it's your own goddamn bullets in your own fucking jet. I wonder who signed that bitch out at this time of day. You know what I mean? But, like, it's the stories that they would tell me about that were funny because they, about, like, two to three times a week, an F5 would get grounded for a month because somebody fucking shot the shit out of themselves. And the way that, that's how they would phrase it, too. But in, like, you know, a hella, like, Bud Anderson kind of accent and cockiness. I'm just looking at this. Apparently, the Hornet had triple ejection racks on the center pylon for Mark 82s. I don't think they ever DCS used it though because those. of ground. I don't think they ever used it because of ground clearance, and that's why now the that's why the Sea Hornet only had two. Um, yeah. Here, that's why, here uh, it that's says the same reason why we don't have the three racks on the wings as well is because of deck clearance on the boat when doing a carrier landing. If you come back with stores. Because otherwise, you'd have to drop that whole rack. Says, yeah, apparently what <laughs> this says is um, it's possible to carry a total of 19 Mark 82 bombs, um, but it's not a typical load. The drag penalty is very high, and against strongly defended targets, it's possible that only twin store vertical ejection racks will be carried. Um, a typical load would therefore be four Mark 83s and six Mark 82s. Um, the drag penalty is from not only the racks, but also the weapons individually. I gonna say, dude, that's a fucked up. Imagine that, Scarlet. Our BDU racks with um, snake eyes. Yeah. With a fucking Mark 84 hanging off below them bitches. Mm-mm. 
Uh uh dude that uh uh I I see I that makes a lot of sense dude that fuck that oh my god Oh dude you dropped two bombs off one side bro you're not recovering from that Oh fuck that Oh hell no Dude just thinking about that's making me shudder That is just cold in here Um Dude, I wasn't even thinking Sweat. drag penalty. Oh, that sounds so horseshit, dude. Oh, fuck that. I'll be right back. The, the, this loadout's just annoying me. It's an image of a hornet with three paveways and one harm. <laughs> what? I don't know. That's toxic. But I do suppose, you know, Real life nah, loadouts are also dictated by you know inventory and <laughs> cost. <laughs> so like, yeah, if I, you can't I, afford I sure to hang a second harm on it, might as well put a third paveway. Yeah, I, I, I sure, I sure love the information that you get out of Santa you know the spell. guesses. I mean, it, it, th this is all. I mean, this book was made the year the Hornet entered service, so a lot of this is guesses. And I'm looking at this. That is definitely a harm. Yeah. Here it says left FSD Hornet Seven configured for an attack mission with three paveway laser guided bombs and an AGM eighty four harpoon. Incorrect. Okay, oh, so we're oh. just we're just we're just gonna go fucking attack the carrier fleet with fucking dumb bombs and a single anti ship missile. What the damn it's not hell? Even an I mean, I mean that's, that's the thing. It's just a misidentification. Oh, I, mean, I, I just got back about the about the dumb bombs. Um, you might want to have a look at Argentina. <laughs> You're talking to me? Yeah. Okay. I mean, a a attacking I ships at? with dumb bombs is not as stupid as you might think. Well, okay, okay. The I mean, biggest any thing amount about of explosives. That, I'm talking about modern ships okay <laughs> yeah do you know how many upgrades phalanx has gotten to be fair phalanx wasn't a thing in the fall so yeah exactly Auckland's 82 82 yes yeah. by mistake yeah you're not surviving you know modern seawards you're not yeah close yeah. encounters gonna I mean, cut you. In, in most cases, sea darts obliterated anything Argentinian before it got close enough to get to a strike. Um, <laughs> right, and even then, most but, ships that did get hit were by A4s that came up from the mountain, or came from behind yeah. the mountain. It's in the and field. Sheffield, <laughs> Sheffield is the exception. Sheffield was hit because the missile, uh, the anti-air systems operator was not on duty, and his assistant was asleep. <laughs> so it's yeah, that that wasn't that that wasn't the thing mm. that would have happened. I mean the, the thing is the destroyers being used in the Falcon, they didn't actually have CIWS whatsoever. No. They were completely reliant on the sea dart systems. Um and sea which dart. would Yeah. I mean what are you on the fuel? <laughs> I mean, DCS adding the Invincible has showed one thing to me, and that's how terrifying the Sea Dart is. Oh yeah. Because I mean, it's oh it's, it's an it's a big missile with a ramjet in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's efficient as fuck. And when I say efficient, I mean it's fuel efficient. The thing will yeah. fucking kill you at a hundred miles away. Yeah, because ramjet. And it's still so burning. And it's still fucking burning. The only reason it can't hit you any farther than that is because the boat's fucking radar just is not that capable. Yeah, yeah. because we can't see you behind the planet. Yeah, right. exactly. Let, so, let like, go those in the missiles are fucking ho If you could find a way to mount those on, like, a fucking AWACS or something, dude, those things would have a reach halfway across the goddamn planet. I shit yeah, you the, not, the thing, dude. The thing with the CDAR is you, um, what, they're semi active. So you need a huge painting radar to have a chance of hitting anything. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm saying so like, I, if you I had just... like a, an AWACS or something that had a hella good radar that you could focus on something from, you know, 30,000 feet, I swear to God, that missile would, 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 I mean, would, countries, countries. If the AWACS could, could, could do, do something down STT. across Scarlet's entire fucking country. 
you can. Yeah, it can. It can. In a sense, it can. What? Yeah, that's that's how an AWACS gets you bra. It locks uh, onto just, the target and no, identifies that's, a particular that's direction. That's basically like taking the data from the radar into Windows and then just mousing over it. I'm talking like focusing, uh, beam forming all of that energy onto one it, solid target for a, like... At that point you don't need a, the missile, you'll just give them cancer. Yeah, true. <laughs> But that's the thing, though, is it, but it like, very well But, like, if you can. could take all of that power from an AWACS radar into a no-bullshit STT log, you could definitely launch a CDAR from Perth and smack an aircraft over Sydney. Definitely. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, ju I'm just looking at this here. Apparently, after the Falklands, Argentina just bought two Type 42 destroyers. And yeah, it sounds like fucking... Yeah, sounds like <laughs> goddamn right. Uh, Scarlet, look, just look at your aircraft. You've got holes in your leading edge flaps, eh? Oh, wonderful. They yeah. hit me. Yep. Yeah. I, I saw the puffs from my driver's seat. Are you guys airborne or something? I am. Oh, shit. Oh, God. There's so many friendly fire incidents with sea darts. Oh, yeah. As with um, exosets and harpoons. Yeah. And seaweeds. I, um, in, in, yeah, I'm just looking at the combat service on the Wikipedia. Um, uh, well, the idea generally was a sea dart would not let anything go to high altitude. And then the Argentinians didn't want to go low because a Harrier will always win if you're low. Sounds about right. Yeah, they. They hit a Puma with a Sea Dart. To be honest, the missile was probably more expensive and bigger than the helicopter it hit. Um, probably they didn't hit Raz F6 real quick. <laughs> they hit some oh, Skyhawks that were going for a strike with bombs. Why? 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 Because fuck you. That's why. You almost made me go into the grass watching this fucking eye cancer. God damn it! I hate these things off anything but an A4. I'm not even in that tank anymore. This is rude. During the last Exocet air attacks on the British fleet, HMS Exeter shot down two out of four Skyhawks, despite them flying only 10 to 15 meters. Fuck you. Above the sea. Holy shit. Okay. Um. Yeah, ED, I have a bug report. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Uh, I can't really look at you right this second. Oh. All right, all right. So what just happened there was, I was back. leaning in, staring at my left MFD to pilot that walleye in. Then, impact. I see a flash on my FLIR, and then my AMPCD with the map in HSI just starts strobing like it's a freaking nightclub. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then the uh, Clear occluded in its housing and the uh um, Actually, it's not the year. Yeah, it stopped. I oh, think dear. what happened was um it was suddenly for some reason unsure what brightness it should yeah, it's back. Uh oh. Yeah, it's like strobing between minimum and maximum brightness. This is weird. It sounds really weird. Alright, you know what? Fuck it, I don't need the screen anyway. It's off two other MFDs. <laughs> it doesn't, but like, you know how if you turn off your right MFD, it shuts off your center right MFD? Mm-hmm. Which is fucking weird, but hornet shit. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of cool. That was uh, my first walleye against tank. Oh yeah, I don't know if you killed the tank or not. I didn't see oh, it. I did. I def, I oh. definitely did. Cool.
What's your fuel state? Full. Oh. I literally just took off. Ah. Damn. Where's Sanford at? Oh, I'm just departing now. Oh, I hate these. Please tell me you don't have any more. I can only carry two. Thank God. But hey, it's a 2,000 pound warhead that I can day link into the target. Well. Yes, it's on a potato screen, but I don't give a I, shit. I, I, I understand. I love the walleye itself. I just hate them when they're dropped from fucking hornets. And this one, Only I'm not even steering. Uh, this one's not gonna hit. Oh, maybe. I didn't see where it was gonna hit. It's hidden behind this fucking. Fat ass of a missile. Right in the oh, side. Oh, straight into the hatch. Oh. He's well, he very, the whole very dead. <laughs> the whole group is very, very dead. Alright, like now I gotta up. find something for my Zuni. Oh, it's dead. Roll, roll. That is the one shit thing about the walleyes in the Hornet. Is that they're on stations 2 and 8, and they're 2,000 pounds each. Yeah, that blows. Yeah, that blows for my roll trim. <laughs> well, the one thing I hate about DCSAI is they have absolutely no self-preservation. No, they don't. I'm, cu I'm currently watching two fish beds just casually fly towards the carriers on the server. The carriers don't shoot. The carriers don't work where the fuck on for you. Uh, the Invincible doesn't. Oh, fuck. Oh. The Invincible has sea darts. <laughs> What, uh, what server? Which like for you? Uh, I'm on the stable US currently. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they don't work for fuck on Cold War. Yeah, Cold War's beta. No, I, I got a friend that downloaded the stable off the DCS site. So he can't oh, easily on switch. Stable version. God, sure. I thought you were talking like, uh, duh. What the fuck? What was I? I'm stupid. Yeah. Fucking dumb. I'm tired of things. Don't judge me. Uh, we do judge you. Oh, we love you also. Up. You better. I'll be pissed otherwise. Fucking leading me on like this. Thought we had something special going on, Scarlet. I can love you and judge you at the same time. Oh, well, you fucking can't. Well, yeah, you can. You are my best friend. Right? <laughs> I, I guess How you had that. How far is that? 68 kilometers. Okay. Is the sea dart gonna fire or is it just gonna keep spinning? What is uh, I'm just watching thing? the sea dart just spin. I know. Not I wish I could carry it though. Even though it's just friend. I'm not actually BBR fighting. I'm just, I mean, unless you want to. Oh, shit. You don't look like you're inbound for a fight, though. That's probably annoying as fuck. Altitude. Altitude. That hit anything? I don't know, I wasn't looking. I'm in my own hornet. Yeah, it hit something. Let's take fuck off going, you got that. Scratch one BTR with Zoonies. I've actually got a second book on the Tomcat as well. Um.
Hello. Oh, I wasn't fucking ready for that. Mm. Oh, fun fact, one of the proposed designs for the Tomcat had can art. Yep. It also oh, looks suspiciously like an F-15. Are you sure it's not an F-15 active? Nope. Now that's definitely... It's... It shows three designs. Three, six, rather. Um... What oh, the hell is that? Oh, I'm oh, I'm so dead. That just looks like a TU-22 converted to a fighter. Um... I don't even know what that is, but that looks like what the Tomcat ended up being. What the fuck are you? Oh, I said no chat. Oh, I thought we were gunfighting! What the fuck? Oh, sorry. Okay, well. There goes that plan, I guess. I'm sorry. I'm missing You're this good. Really. <laughs> <laughs> That does look pretty, though. You can just see the fire. Huh? Man, I'm doing exactly what one dude in Dogfight said he did. F-15 driver, Desert Storm, cap for a flight of Nighthawks over Baghdad. And he BVRs his MiG, and, um, and his missile flies straight through the formation. And guy blows up, and F-15 driver is just up there turning. And he says in, in the interview, not doing anything tactical, just looking at the fireball. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah. That's dogfights, right? Yep. Yeah. That was good. That was a good episode. You know those are all free on YouTube now, I need to rewatch them. Um, not in my country, they're not. Uh, I do have yeah. four of the DVDs. But oh, there you go. I've lost the one of the not. discs. And it's the one with all the Vietnam shit. Gotcha. I was gonna say, did you steal them from Netflix like I did? <laughs> They're not on Australian Netflix. Oh, they were on US for um, DVD rental back in like 2005. <laughs> Whoa. I have it recorded. Whoa. Scarlet seeking help. Okay. Yeah? I've, yeah. I, I found. I found what appears to be an upgrade for the um, rear seater, I, th I think, on the Tomcat. But um, apparently they were planning to give it a digital display, an MFD. Well, they followed through on that. You said you needed help with something, Santa? Yeah, I've got the um, 82. I'm trying laser guided stuff now because mm -hmm. it's night time nearly. Uh, so I box 82LG. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a cross thread at the moment. I uh, select mode auto. Mm -hmm. Uh, fuse uh, instant, yep. and then when I when I press c code, I press one eight six six. Uh, uh, sorry, one six eight eight. Uh, and you press have enter. To press the button next to code on the UFC as well. So there's a, a colon next to it. That yep. tells the jet um, uh, where yeah, the data yep. is going. Roger. Okay. Thanks. Silly. Thank you. It's all good. I have you tracked on my FLIR, by the way. Thank you. One, eight, uh, one, is it one eight six six normally? Yeah. One six yeah, eight default. eight is the default. One six eight eight. Thank you. So you can set it to whatever you like. Just make sure the part is also laser. On that same okay. One. Yep. Let's get our just on that. I swear, not a single aircraft on this server st is. Um, because all the aircraft on the server are pre-started, right? Yeah. Not a single aircraft is started in the same way. There is always something different. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I, I mean... <laughs> I just spawned in a Tomcat that started with the Master Arm on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, earlier I spawned in a fish bed that had the... Um, ABS on. And another one I spawned in had it off. And then whether the afterburner starts on or off varies as well. Uh, you it's know like what that nothing is. Nothing is the same. You know what that is? That's Ivan and fucking. Um, 
goose jester fucking leaving switches on when they climb out of the jet. Well, that's what we're gonna write that off as. It's the same thing as if, almost the same thing as if when we're flying Apaches and Hines and a missile goes in between your cockpit, fails to explode. Because Ivan back at the fucking factory is a dipshit and doesn't know how to build a proper proxy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just realistic Russian missile reliability. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's because Ivan doesn't know how to build a reliable proc. <laughs> Fucking awesome. So many good clips of that. Like that one devil had where the fucking missile came right over us. You remember that? Yeah. Dude, that was insane from his front seat, dude. That was fucking horrifying. <laughs> I did not enjoy that one. I mean, I did. It was cool as shit, but... Not in the moment, you didn't. Yeah, no, I was like, devil? Uh, I choose life. Why are we still here? <laughs> uh -huh. So, should be next? Alright, Scarlet, if you want to start flying, if you dice, you all taking off for gunplay. Uh, gunplay I'm staring out. at Santa on my flare for the moment. That's why I said no gun. Fine, I'll fly all the fucking way out to you. Okay. I was being... Ah. Oh, paper is the call when you drop a bomb, or...? Yep, when you drop uh, a guided bomb. Call. Guided bomb, yep. My favorite brevity call is... Bruiser. And I love it when you're calling bruiser times bigger, bigger numbers. <laughs> and they don't despawn off the fucking rail. Looking at you, for ya. <laughs> oh, my, miffled were. My, my favorite is the opposite of bruiser. Vampire, yeah. Yeah, yeah vampire's a scary call, though, because, like, think about it. You're in the middle of the... Yeah, you're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Land. Yeah. And... All of a sudden, your only landing point just disappeared off the map. <laughs> the fuck you gonna do about it? I don't know about you, but I'm gonna fly that bitch until it's out of fuel around that fleet, and I'm gonna eject that jet right next to one of them goddamn escort destroyers so I know I'm getting the fuck home. <laughs> I mean, that is literally the procedure. Good, because I ain't going fucking anywhere. <laughs> fuck that shit, dude. And yeah, this is awesome. Are you in AA mode? Yep. Cool. If you unlock him from your radar and only have him point tracked from your T pod, Which you I can did. have your radar. You can have your radar scanning around, and if it's, uh, I think it's your TDC left. No, I don't remember which which button it is. But there's a button you can press that will slave your radar to the T pod, and if it is on a good point for about three seconds. Um, if the radar is slaved and gets a contact there after about three seconds of search, it will then lock that contact. Mm -hmm. So, it's funny, if you can't find a helicopter, because it's on the ground on your radar, or the, uh, you know, really slow, or it's like moving just too fast for GMT, too slow for your uh, air air radar. There we go. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, don't that's worry. That's, nice. that's just me. Uh, that's okay. Cool, cool. That pleases me a lot. But yeah, if it's you know too fast for GMT, too slow for air-to-air -air radar, um, you can end up finding it with your um, T-pod, and then just slaving the radar in that direction, and an AIM-7 will actually ride that beam even if you don't have anything long. It will cool. always reason, annoy me uh, how good the army is. I lost, I lost my uh, point track on him and I can't get it back. Oh, I don't know. Right. Oh, there's I'm a lot of beeping going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good as long as you've got it. Oh, shit. It didn't work. And I'm watching fish beds easily notch phoenixes. Yeah, Phoenix has been looking for a hot minute. Where the hell is he? Oh, there he is. Lock him. What do you mean you can't do that? He's right there. 
Oh, uh, just, just to be in a bitch again? Yep. Target ahead. No, that's not the right target. Hey, boy. You literally have the TV viewer on there it. There we go. Fuck three. Capture. Where the hell did he go? Oh shit, I was a lot closer than I meant to be. Uh, you guys should go evasive, that's a mad dub. <laughs> Hate the autopilot on the Tomcat. Going to space though. Never mind, you might be fine. Where'd he go? Alright. No, I was hoping to scare you guys with the bleed. -de 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 -de. Is there another one? Yeah, but things at 45,000 climbing. Doing 19 degrees up. Ah, uh, there it is. Running away. Go. Check. Whoa. Hello. You slow down a whole lot quicker than I thought you would. Who <laughs> <laughs> space with you, Missile? Where nobody uses the M54 C's. No, the A's have better range. Yeah, the, the A Mark 60s. Ah, there we go. I've also, uh, oh, personally, the the A doesn't have the reduced smoke motor, which makes it cooler in every single way. Uh, Scarlet, I just got an AMRAM up to 120,000 feet at 850 knots. Oh, little AMRAM, very nice. One hundred thirty thousand seven hundred. Fucking missile, dude. It's gonna come Thanks, down like a rod from God. <laughs> 140,000 feet. 150, holy shit. Make your five o'clock, uh, Scarlet. Visual. Watch out for this AMRAP coming down around Batumi from fucking orbit, guys. It's still a mad dog. Wouldn't that be something? Your missile burns all of its energy only to fall back to Earth, lock onto something, build its energy back, and hit the target. <laughs> I mean, that's what a scud is, right? It's got pretty fucking much. <laughs> only, you know, it's a mad dog AMRAM. Hmm. The stalled out 155,000, um, 155,000 feet at about. Oh shit, like 400 knots. <laughs> and now it's picked its speed back up to 800 and climbing. <laughs> 900. It's now supersonic again. <laughs> of course. It's so funny, dude. What the fuck? It's broke a thousand. <laughs> it's now locked onto something. No, it hasn't. It's just wiggling. It built up, uh, it built back up to 170,000. Well, we're north of Kolki right now, so we should be completely safe. Oh, yeah, you're, you're more than fine. Oh, I was out of there, but it's so funny. Oh, you're up at Kolki. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, no, my mistake. We're, uh, just north of, uh, Kabaletti. Bingo! Bingo. Thank you, Betty. All right, it's Fox Three. No, I'm kidding. I don't have any more. Ah, fuck. Fox Three. Where are the wings? Cooper just accepted that as his anthem when we like indoctrinated him. <laughs> Boy's a good sport. He is. I will 
I'll say I've only How got... did I just engage? Because that was not a mirage. I've only got a couple. Oh, that's RF. Okay, no, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> No, he fired both of his IR missiles at long range and then his radar missile at short range. Sounds French. Yeah. And I believe this MiG-25 is now going to team kill with an R-40. <laughs> uh, oh, last, no, he broke uh, lock. DCSAI. Still better than half the player base. Yeah, I, I had, I had. What the hell? That F-18 is reversing. What's your favorite um, dumb player moment on a multiplayer game? Oh God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Give me a uh, multiplayer game, DCS on DCS. What? Uh, could you tell me the uh, true bearing of the Kutaisi runway, east west? Or rather, west off. east. Oh, you hopped off. Yeah, I gotta go to bed. Okay. I gotta work tomorrow. I only get three hours to myself a day when I'm working. I only have to work four days a week though, so I just accept it. I like that a lot better than five. It's just a little hard. There we go. Ah, <sighs> uh, shit. Stay in chat for a little bit though, but if I get real quiet, whoa, whoa, scream whoa. my name and wake me up. Safety high. Safety high, I'm looking for you. Yep, I'm yours. Uh, just uh, roll right a bit and come back down. Roll right and come back down. Level off, we clear. Level off. Keep coming uh, down. Oh yeah, got you down there, got gotcha, you, yeah. We should, one of these days, since Santa's starting to fly more frequently with us, and once he gets a little bit more comfortable with the Hornet, and, you know, all that, start taking him on FOIA missions. Hell yeah. Um, we should, before we do that, we should do a quick, like, three-day, like, or not three-day, but, like, three-sortie, like, you know, three-session um, breakdown of proper, like, procedures. Mm -hmm. You know, like, go over, like, formation takeoff timing and re-go over what safety is and shit like that because I feel like I kind of need a refresher course on that as well. Yeah. Oh, procedures. Not like a course, but kind of like, like how we fly kind of thing, you know? Yeah. When we're trying to be smart. Badass. Yeah, smart. I am starting to kind of wish the, um, the one that could project the uh, clear image on the HUD. Yeah, yeah, it, that's like, it's very, well not very, but semi-recent technology compared to the Hornet. Mudhead didn't come out, Mud Hen didn't come out till like the mid-90s. <laughs> Rhino I think might be able to do it, but like, we're not allowed to know much about the Rhino. So. Um, the uh, oh fuck, it's right there. The um, AT FLIR has a nav FLIR camera in it. Um, the uh, US Navy just never um, implemented. implemented it. And my attack hand drifted again. That's crazy. What Don't the hell is that MiG 25 doing? How the fuck does attack hand drift? That makes no sense. I have no idea. Yeah, let me try this one. Nope. I'm watching a MiG-25 fly between valleys. What the hell is the AI doing? Right, right while a Mirage shoots up to 35,000 feet. I also started a thread for suggestions for Kiwis on Foria. Mm, I saw that. And everybody's just pretty much telling me to get good. Yeah, I did see that too. It's like, you motherfuckers, I don't want to do helicopter shit. I want to do combined arms shit. You just have made it so that I can't do that because nobody gives a damn about it. Which blows. I did see uh, someone uh, give 
If I can word good, someone give the suggestion that um, uh, CTLD should allow you to recreate uh, units. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? So, like, say we drop an ammo truck somewhere, uh -huh. we can recreate it, like put it back in the crate and uh, take off again Move with it. it and take it somewhere else. I like that. That mm. doesn't really help much, but. Well, Can we I'm just be allowed to airlift the entire unit? Just sling load it? I mean, there's a reason CTLD exists, and it's because uh, multiplayer sling loading is utter crap. Hmm. It's a good idea, but yeah, there's a reason we don't do it. <laughs> what the hell? I can't. The biggest Stealth thing, Mirage. Like, you could totally set aircraft to ignore a specific group or a specific unit so like you could specifically tell the AI aircraft and their tr like triggers not even having to get into like you know TTLD or anything like that just the fucking default triggers and tell the aircraft hey ignore these units then only pick the helicopters from Fort Dallas And I don't even care if, like, you know, I'm occasionally getting shot at. That's kind of cool. You know, I like that experience. I just don't like that experience when all of a sudden I end up having to dodge a fucking Mirage F1 because the snares won't be loaded in the middle of a fucking field for some goddamn reason. And I'm playing a fucking arena around the skyscraper with a fucking F1 for 20 minutes for an F16 to come and dunk me from behind with two Mirage 2000s, maybe two miles away, getting ready for Enfield action shot one, one. Cleared for visual, contact tower. That was not fun. And yeah. I was fucked either way. Like, no chance. You know what I mean? A Huey cannot defend against four fixed ones. Yeah. And that's not the experience I'm looking for, so I just really have not hopped on for you recently. There's just no enjoyment for me anymore. I mean, the Hind has R60s, but it still isn't really for defense against aircraft, it's for defense against other helicopters. Yeah. Um, I mean, it can fight aircraft, but it's a Hind, it has a huge thermal signature, and chances are you're just going to get obliterated by an R27ER before you even have a chance. Exactly. Also, I swear the AI mirages are actual UFOs. What the hell is that? I know, right? Like, they perform so well. Yeah. That thing, I've seen that thing out running my MiG-21, which is like, that's a joke. Yep. And that's yeah, why I hate the mean. mirage. It's a fucking... Like, uh, I'm quite certain the player Mirage does not fly that well. Oh, it does. No, it, it totally it does. does. That's, that's the fucking bullshit part about it, dude. Is it that the player Mirage is literally just as fucking broken? Uh, I'm just watching a 500 km an hour Sidewinder glide up to a MiG-25. That was good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, so the most bullshit multiplayer experience, the most dumbass player multiplayer experience you've had in DCS. Shoot. I mean that jackass one. spawning on top of me on the cat. Oh yeah, I've that's seen a someone. Good one. <laughs> a I've good seen one. someone fire three oh, no, at a mix twenty one. Uh huh. That was interesting. So, I got a good one. Scarlet will remember this. I come down for a landing at Nostrick on Foria because me and Scarlet just took Nostrick, and mm. I park on the only fucking taxiway. This dipshit F-14 starts taxiing to the end of the runway, and Scarlet's on a two-mile final right behind me. So, I park in the center of the taxiway to make sure this motherfucker doesn't occupy the runway so she can land. She gets wheels down, and this motherfucker taxis through the grass to get around me. To take off while she's in the middle of the fucking runway. Yeah. I never seen a more dumbass motherfucker. And then she, Scarlet moves over to the right side. This F-14 on center line unfolds his wings. It's like, wow, dude, you're a fucking freak. 
The so players I, are I, certainly interesting. Dude, yeah, interesting is an understatement, dude. I've never seen such an asshole move in online gaming. And that's like really not that asshole of a move. That's just like a you're impatient and need to chill the fuck out. But like, that was a dick fucking move. The worst part about it? I, mean, I, I think yesterday. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The worst part about it was he was wearing a chrome cap. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yesterday I was playing with a friend. Uh, he was flying the F-16, I was flying the F-18, right? And th this guy joins, because I'm on the four-way A server, right? Now, first bad sign, his name is literally Best F-15. Oh, he is flying an F-15. He has a full loadout of AMRAMs. Now, while we're doing effective cap, this guy comes in, fires three AMRAMs. One at the enemy, one at my friend in his F-16, and one I'm not even sure, there wasn't even a third target. Oh my And it's God. like... <laughs> now, in the process, he hit my friend's F-16, missed his actual target, and then got shot down and left. Oh dear Christ. <laughs> I cannot believe I <laughs> douchebags like oh. that still exist. Okay, I got one. Fucking F-18 takes off with a full kit of harms, gets into a God. fucking turn fight with an F-5, and starts and losing loses. the fucking turn fight. Yeah. <laughs> so this fucking F-16 comes in and saves this dude's ass. I mean, like, literally, and I'm f 2 to this, you know, I hit F-5. I'm watching this whole thing from this dumbass's point of view. So this F-16 comes in and saves his ass. And this F-16 turns back to go to attack its airfield like he was doing in the first place. And this fucking F-18 hunts him down and throws a spam ram in his ass. And I hop yeah. up and chat and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? He just saved your bacon and you fucking shoot him down and the dude comes up. Yeah, bro, what the fuck was that? The dude's like, bro, you yeah, fucking like interrupted my dogfight. It's like, dude, you were losing to an F5. And he's like, no, I wasn't. And I was like, bro, I watched you for fucking two minutes in a solid rate turn, and that F5 draw fucking lag and get on your tail, dude. Your ass was as good as grass. Yeah, like, the, the, I think dude. a lot of people forget this isn't War Thunder. Yeah, yeah dude. You're, you're not supposed to care problem. if you kill steal. There's no such thing as kill stealing. If you're losing a dogfight, the objective is that your teammate comes in and assists. <laughs> Yes, it is a simulator. If you are losing, ask for help. The point is to survive. Yeah. I mean, go do all this cool shit, hell yeah, but make it home. Mm. That is the pure principle of DCS. I mean, I don't care if someone does, you know, something the God knows what. I mean... If you do a Cobra and it lets you win a dogfight, I don't care because it works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's a fucking... It, a dogfight is literally a dogfight. Doing whatever you can to force yourself the advantage to win the fight. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, that makes sense. If a Cobra is what does that, a Cobra is what did that. If playing dead is what did that, playing dead is what did that. If fucking playing dead to get the fuck out of there is what did that, then, dude, you made a decision that lets you go back to do it again tomorrow. You know oh, what I mean? I hate the SA5. Oh, dude, <laughs> dude. Oh, mom. Oh. I don't think you know how stupid the SA5 can get. Dude. No, like, I spent I don't most of my know. time in this server trying to not die to it. And this isn't even the most OP SA5. This is the fourth out of sixth gen. And there were two sixth gens technically, but we don't count the second half of that because who the fuck puts a thermonuclear warhead in the sand? You fucking goddammit, Russia. <laughs> it's the Soviets. Of course they put a thermonuclear warhead in it. Yeah. And that was primarily because they were worried about the reload time, so they wanted to take out as much of a Western bomber group as they could in one shot. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's literally that's the that same the doctrine as the design. genie rocket. Yeah, exactly. Well, not really, because like you know, you can't really reload the genie without 
well, it, um, it's landing still, and rearming. But... It, it's still kill as many of the fuckers as you can with one round. Yeah, basically. But the Russians were more afraid of, okay, it takes us an hour and a half to put a new round in the chamber. Let's make sure this round gets a collat of, like, 50. <laughs> <laughs> the genie, it's more so. Don't get close. But get them Don't all. Don't get close. <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Don't get close. Get them all. Don't get close. And don't get close. <laughs> you know you how I found die. out about the genie? <laughs> huh. I got a, uh, a weapons mod for KSP. BD Armory. And then mm. I got an add-on for the mod. Um, Red vs. Blue, it was called. And it added a whole bunch of uh, big weapons, including nukes. And I had so this big, fat thing called the genie. No guidance. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Take it up, shoot it off, and then promptly explode. Fuck. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, nu that, "That's a bunch of bullshit." <laughs> Quick Google later. Oh fuck. They really I did just they... stick a rocket motor on the end of a warhead. But more so they yeah. stuck a warhead on the end of a rocket motor. <laughs> nah, the other way around. To be honest, my biggest experience with nuclear weapons in anything remotely to do with flight is the MiG-21 with its um, RN-24s, <laughs> right? I've never survived deploying an RN-24. Me neither. Uh, you, just you just die. You just die. Yeah, there's I nothing have, else I've, to it. You're dead. I've seen it happen once. I don't remember flown the MiG-21 in BTS, but I've seen someone survive it once. I think Ralphie dude managed to do it. Yeah, it's like a fucking. There's... If you own the MiG-21, that is like your life goal is to learn how to survive <laughs> the fucking yeah. blast from your own nuke. The, the RN-28 you can survive easily. You just toss ah. bomb it and burn her away. <laughs> but the RN-24 is some ten times bigger. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the, technically, the, the, it's only twice the size, but it's ten times the warhead. Yeah. The, the proper method to doing it is with the RN-28, release the bomb in a straight... Oh, no, it's not straight. It's like 120 degrees nose back. Yeah. So, like, Over you the pull shoulder. up with full uh, burner. Yeah. yeah, well, kind of, because no, when you drop the, it... The... When, when, you're, when you're 120 degrees, the bomb... And the, 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 the whatever, the G pulling it away from the jet while you're in... Um, makes the bomb go straight up and then come straight down, which gives you a chance to dive away. Yeah. But with the with the bigger bomb, you're supposed to kind of do it in the same experience, the same method. But instead of um, 120 degrees, you do it at 75 degrees. So that way, big boom, go way fuck over there. <laughs> I believe the you have the 28 <laughs> and the 24. The 28 is a smaller warhead. I think. As far as I'm aware, from what I watched, is Soviet doctrine was that the 28 would be released at 45 degrees, and the 24 was 120. Um, because the 24, you just had to get it to go as high as possible. Mm. And even then, the RN-24 is... Um, I mean, it's kind of... you're not expecting to survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's, uh, it's, it's like... the. The difference between how far you can throw the thing at 45 is All a much shorter it. range than how far you can piss off when just lobbing the thing straight up. Because that's going yeah. straight up at 600 knots, slow down, and then come all the way the fuck back down. So I like oh, how I'm, I'm watching it goes down. every time for when he flies with it. Dude, you don't have to fucking thank me for it, bro. Like, <laughs> I, you're good, dude. I just want you to have fun, bro. And it seems like you are. You're set. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for it. What did he say this time, dude? It's fucking... I love this shit so yeah, much, Yeah, he's, he's such a such a nice dude. Nice guy. Great. Yeah, dude. He's, he's so polite. Hmm. You never see that shit anymore, right? First night landing, too. Woo! Is that what he said? Yep. Oh, nice. Mm. End up talking about stuff. That's <laughs> clueless about. about. For fuck's sake. Yeah. And he was right on my ass um, with that landing, and I was just fucking around. I wasn't even doing things properly. 
No, oh, there you go. Like, um, like my, my tack end fucked up when I was like overhead when I thought I was 30 miles away. So I basically just yank it right <laughs> all of a sudden. And then when I'm like two miles from the threshold, I realize I can't see shit. So I have to faff around with the radios to get them to turn the bloody lights on. That's fucking and then as, as I'm taxiing it. in, I just see lights behind me, just like, oh fuck, he's still there. Hey dude, at least it's not as bad as the fucking um, terrier tax ends. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Cutting off on you halfway through a mission. I figured out why they do that too. Why? So DCS actually has a uh, encryption, to s or not an encryption, but a code in it, to, like the DCS itself mm -hmm. for the Stennis, um, to after like the three to four hours automatically turn off all beacons. Why? Uh, to save on um, on resources. Like sim, like sim resources. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. My jet does not shut down, and I push the throttles up. Okay. But yeah, they do that so that way, like, the game doesn't get all freaked out and shit and start getting laggy. But usually they don't expect the, the servers to um, be on that one. Three hours? Really? Yeah. Well, usually a player-made mission only lasts about two hours max. Mm. Campaign mission is about the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're not really planning for much more than that, which is why Foria has the, the you know, reactive attack ends.